Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community nerf news. I'm Adriana. This week, four blasters from a brand new Alpha Strike line have been leaked. Joshua Church posted the first photos on Nerf Modders Welcome Facebook group. They all share a similar aesthetic, orange and yellow, skeletonized grips, no magazines. We'll start with the least interesting. The Stinger is a jolt by another name. Literally nothing more to be said about that. Lynx is a barrel break pump action blaster that appears to only hold one dart front loaded. Six dart storage on the back. Another blaster is called Tiger something. It's a shotgun style pump action blaster. This one appears to have a two dart capacity, but I'm at a loss to how it might function. At first glance, it looks like you'd load like a rough cut and stick the darts in the front, but the smaller image also has darts on an inside compartment on the side. Does it shoot one or two at a time? I don't know, I guess we'll see. The Wolf is the last of the Alpha Strike leaks. It appears to be breech loaded like the Falcon Fire and Sharp Fire, but with a pull handle on the back above the stock instead of a slide like the other blasters. I think the yellow part has a very interesting shape and could make for some cool integrations. Overall, this appears to be a low budget line. No magazines, skeleton handles, low capacity. Dr. Snickus, who's known for low FPS, high accuracy cages, is releasing a high performance, high crush cage that is promising FPS numbers up to 195 FPS. There's very limited information available on its website on the new Hi-Fi Gen 3.1 cage, and our sources were unable to get a response from him. But we've obtained some images of the cage and wheels, thanks to user Faraday on the Blasted.de forums. It looks like it's a straight cage instead of being canted like his other designs. The cage seems to utilize a similar approach to the Eclipse flywheel system by enclosing the dart almost completely and having a one-piece machined cage instead of the brass guide he uses on his other cages. It should be noted that the DRS cage looks to have more mass than an Eclipse cage, so it should make less noise. For flywheels, DRS is now using blue acetal, which he claims has the largest impact resistance in the market which we're not exactly sure why that matters since there aren't much impact forces happening to the flywheel and we haven't heard of any acetyl delrin wheels breaking in the hobby under normal use. Initial reports from Faraday have the new cage chronoing around 150 to 170 FPS with elite darts and a chrono barrel, which would definitely be impressive if we didn't already have an Eclipse available in the hobby. We have more leaks of the upcoming Fortnite suppressed pistol. As many were predicting, it looks to have an internal magazine. Many people have speculated the blaster is more than likely a reshell of the DL-44, which is the Star Wars Han Solo blaster, and while there are a lot of similarities of the internals, it looks like there's many bespoke parts internally. The plunger tube and trigger assembly are different, albeit similar parts, but the magazine looks nearly identical, but slightly shorter. Based on the now-deleted video that was uploaded to Facebook, it looks like the pistol only has three shots. In the GDOP26 Spring Thunder group, Timmy Nguyen posted a new 3D printed sidearm he created, the Falcon, and it looks awesome. The blaster is similar to the Dessert Pigeon by Heath Heel, but it uses Talon magazines instead of katanas and has two stages of Flywheel the World flywheels. He claims to be getting 125 FPS with Honey Badgers run on 3S which is primary level in my opinion, for something that looks this cool. I absolutely love the aesthetic. It's very futuristic, but still simple and clean and just looks so cool. Even cooler, he posted the files on GitHub along with a shopping list for hardware. You should be able to build one yourself for around $80. Oh, and have I mentioned it looks really cool? <laughs> yes, another leak. Weirdly, this one comes from an official Nerf Instagram account. The account for Turkey posted an image of a blaster that we haven't seen before. It sports the usual zombie strike aesthetic, green and busy to give the impression of a bunch of tools strapped together. There's speculation this may be the first flywheel blaster in the line because there's no visible priming handle, but Michelle and I are dubious. The jam door in the side leads us to believe it could have a side prime. Others think it could be a demolisher or a desolator reshell, which would also be pretty cool. That handle sure is tiny though, right? I mean, their model can't even fit their hand around it. In more leak news, Joshua Church posted the box art for a rival Edge series Helios, featuring a 30-round drum. 
For more information, we'll go to our resident rival expert, Luke, from Out of Darts. Thanks, Adriana. This week we saw a leak from Hasbro regarding the Rival Edge series. The Edge series is a lime green repaint of existing blasters. While the Helios is nothing new, we did see pictured a mythical 30 round drum magazine. Now this would be the first drum magazine that's hit Rival. There is some speculation as to whether it is going to be released. Looking at this photo a little closer, we see that the image is a box comp, so this is not a physical box. Sometimes when we see a physical box, we know that it's much more likely to come into production. We can also see that the magazine itself pictured is a comp. We see perfect balls lined up, and we can see a little bit of what looks like the follower. I'm very curious to see how this magazine functions once it's in our hands. The follower itself is very curious. I could imagine either a long uh, articulated arm like a necklace or perhaps a foam follower. But we'll know more when we see it this summer. Back to you, Adriana. Thanks, Luke. We're sure no matter how the rival drum turns out, people will be having a ball. Also, I'm really interested in the rainbow of Cronai that seemed to be popping up with the new green one in the Edge series. And for video of the week, Corpse Run posted a video of the Sydney Nerf War 19. I love seeing how groups in other areas play, and this is so different from what we see in the Bay Area. At a minute 40, there's a guy crawling through the bushes. You never see that here. The footage itself is also incredibly smooth. I thought it was a drone or a really good gimbal, but the description says it was filmed on a Google Pixel 3. I need to know the magic behind this. Now it's time for Mod of the Week. This week we chose a blaster that was done primarily by the girlfriend of Milan from Devil's Nerfworks. This mod is incredibly clean. I'm told it's an integration, but I can't pick out what the original blasters were or where they mate together. We especially love the paintwork and the weathering on this. Milan says that she did most of the work with only tips and pointers from him. We love seeing couples that nerf together or mod together. Great job on this blaster. It looks awesome. Thanks for tuning in to This Week in Nerf. We'll be back next week, Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Links for all of our stories are in the description. And closing statement. Pew. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know, like, how to say goodbye. It's weird. <laughs> how to say goodbye. <laughs> Come through saying. <laughs> <laughs> of, like, video effects. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>